Education is concerned with the transmission of knowledge. It is always a deliberate attempt to modify the individual for the better or in terms of what is thought to be desirable. It would be a bad mistake, however, to view this knowledge only in terms of curriculum content because education transmits other knowledge as well. But it would seem fair to claim that education aims to overcome ignorance. He would also appear that education advocates the principle that it is better to have knowledge than to be ignorant. In other words, it is better to be Socrates dissatisfied than a pig satisfied. It is argued that the modern defective curriculum content creates satisfied pigs and increases ignorance than to overcome it. Therefore, Helvetius states that children are born ignorant not stupid. It is education that makes them stupid. So far as defective curriculum is concerned, he is essentially correct. Therefore, designing right curriculum to impart right education is of vital importance in the modern education system. Let us now see the concept of curriculum. Curriculum as a concept is not easily defined. For example, debates are carried on over whether curriculum should emphasize the child versus a subject centered approach, child centered approach, activity centered approach, integrated approach, transmission of culture or the totality of experiences learners encounter in schools. Such issues have generated a number of definitions of what curriculum is. Unfortunately, many definitions of curriculum may confuse the teachers. They were designed to help unless they are seen as valid parts of a dynamic whole. Whatever its definition, a curriculum needs to be flexible enough to meet the needs of the variety of students. All categories of learners need exposure to a wide array of curricular options. The key to curriculum development is selectivity. The skills and objectives chosen for the student community should reflect their goal of becoming as independent as possible both in existing and future living environments. Therefore, one definition of curriculum for a particular category of learner may establish to priority levels in curricular content what skills are essential for a particular type of individual to meet some defined level of independence and what further skills are desirable for those individuals to learn provided they have mastered the essential skills. Selectively involves the careful identification of learning skills and objectives that must be made by each individual student to reach his or her optimal level of independence. Curriculum designers may be in the best position to identify what that select curriculum content should include. Unfortunately, in our country, they are relegated to a secondary position. A major problem when teachers try to follow a curriculum in which they have little or no input. Let us see the derivation of the term curriculum. The term curriculum originates from the Latin word career which means to run. It now connotes courses to run by the school for reaching its goals. Historically, curriculum has come to mean classified selections of accumulated knowledge of academic subjects or disciplines. If education is for life and through life, as the Secondary Education Commission has pointed out, curriculum is much more than the boundaries set by the academic subjects which are taught traditionally. Curriculum means all that goes into the lives of the pupils through the school, home and society. It is the totality of influences and experiences, selected and unselected, conscious, subconscious and even unconscious and planned and unplanned, which the pupil receives through the manifold activities of the school in the classroom, library, laboratory, workshop, playgrounds, 
and in the numerous informal contacts between teachers and pupils. Definitions of curriculum. According to Manusmriti, a curriculum should deal with all the phases of the individual's life. It should train his intellect, teach him to control his actions and purify his spiritual aspirations and help him in his accent towards the spirit. Cunningham curriculum as a tool in the hands of artist that is the teacher to mold his material that is the pupils according to his ideas that is the aims and objectives in a studio that is the school. Kilpatrick defines curriculum as the school environment in motion. According to secondary education commission report, curriculum does not mean only the academic subject traditionally taught in the school, but it includes totality of experience that the pupil receives through the manifold activities that go in the school, in the classroom, library, laboratory, workshop, playground and in the numerous informal contacts between teachers and pupil. In this sense, the whole life of the school becomes the curriculum which can touch the life of the student at all points and help in the evaluation of a balanced personality. Let us see a brief historical account on curriculum. Analyzing curriculum in terms of development is the traditional and most common approach to the field. The idea is to show how curriculum evolves of is planned, implemented and evaluated as well as what various people, processes and procedures are involved in constructing the curriculum. Such development is usually examined in a logical step by step fashion based on behavioral and managerial approaches to curriculum and rooted in scientific principles of education. In other words, the principles are generalizable. Many curriculum texts today use the terms development and plan in the titles and thus reflect this thinking. There are more complicated curriculum development models, but they are geared for the more advanced student of curriculum. All of these development models, however, attempt to show the relationship of curriculum to various decisions, activities and processes. They provide us with guideposts and structure to clarify our thinking. The models tend to be graphically or pictorially illustrated and in terms of input, transformations and output, they are sequential and rational. The curriculum is viewed as a total system and all enterprises within the model are conceived as subsystems. The development models are also the theoretical and scientific and they are designed to increase understanding of facts, correlated and relationships of curriculum. Finally, the models are conceived in technical terms with the assumption that one must be knowledgeable of the field to fully appreciate and understand them. Many curriculum textbook writers tend to formulate developmental models. However, some curricularists use the term development in their respective textbook titles without either formulating their own developmental models or even paying much attention to other models. But the emphasis on development is not without pitfalls. By basing the developmental models around scientific and technical terms, writers tend to overlook the human aspects of teaching and learning. Let us see the importance of curriculum. An effective curriculum provides teachers, students, administrators and community stakeholders with a measurable plan and structure for delivering a quality education. The curriculum identifies the learning outcomes, standards and core competencies that students must demonstrate before advancing to the next level. Teachers play a key role in developing, implementing, assessing and modifying the curriculum. An evidence-based curriculum acts as a roadmap for teachers and students to follow on the path to academic success. The impact on administrators. Administrators follow a detailed curriculum to help students achieve state and national standards of academic performance. Schools can lose public funding if students fall substantially behind peers at higher performing schools. The curriculum ensures that each school is teaching students relevant material and monitoring the progress of students from all types of backgrounds. Impact on teachers A school's curriculum informs teachers what skills must be taught at each grade level to ultimately prepare students for post-secondary education or a job. Understanding the big picture helps teachers align the learning objectives of their own curriculum 
with the school's curriculum. In the absence of a curriculum, teachers would not know whether students are building a solid foundation to support learning at the next level. Impact on students A curriculum outlines for students a sequence of courses and tasks that must be successfully completed to master a subject and earn a diploma or degree. Students may be more motivated to study if they understand why certain subjects are taught in the curriculum. A curriculum reassures students that they are on the right track to reaching their goals and honing desired skill. Other considerations In addition to teaching students academic skills, the curriculum is also intended to teach students the importance of responsibility, hard work and responsible citizenship. Teachers in partnership with parents and community members collaborate on the development of a curriculum that will instill character in students and reinforce positive behavior. Let us now see the definition of curriculum development. Curriculum development is defined as planned a purposeful, progressive and systematic process to create positive improvements in the educational system. Every time there are changes or developments happening around the world, the school curricula are affected. There is a need to update them to address the society's needs. To illustrate this contention, let us trace back history. During the ancient times, people taught their children knowledge and skills to survive by catching fish or hunting animals for food. They had no formal education during that time, but their children learned and acquired the knowledge and skills for survival. So, during that time, they already had a curriculum that other educators call as the saber tooth curriculum. This type of curriculum refers to a kind of curriculum that existed during the ancient times in which the purpose of teaching was for survival. However, when the effects of discoveries and inventions became inevitable, ancient people's way of life had changed for the better. As a result, education became formal and curriculum development evolved as systematic, planned, purposeful and progressive even today. The Importance of Curriculum Development Curriculum development has a broad scope because it is not only about the school, the learners and the teachers, it is also about the development of society in general. In today's knowledge economy, curriculum development plays a vital role in improving the economy of a country. It also provides answers or solutions to the world's pressing conditions and problems such as environment, politics, socio-economics and other issues of poverty, climate change and sustainable development. There must be a chain of developmental process to develop a society. First, the school curriculum, particularly in higher education, must be developed to preserve the country's national identity and to ensure its economy's growth and stability. Thus, the president of a country must have a clear vision for his people and the country as well. Curricular programs for higher education can be crafted in such a way that it will boost the tourism industry. For example, different models may arise such as edu-tourism, eco-tourism, cultural tourism, medico-tourism, business tourism, techno-tourism, agri-tourism, archi-tourism among others. If universities have curricular programs that are innovative and in demand in the local or global markets, many students even from foreign countries will enroll. A higher number of enrollees would mean income on the part of the universities. As a result, if the income is big, it can be used for teachers promotion, scholarship and remuneration. It can also be used in funding research and development endeavors and in putting up school facilities, libraries and laboratories. Country's economy can improve the people's way of life through curriculum development and to develop it, curriculum experts or specialists should work hand in hand with lawmakers such as senators and congressmen, the local government officials, governors, mayors among others. Likewise, Business communities and industries and other economically oriented players in society may be engaged in setting and implementing rules and policies for educational reforms. Hence, curriculum development matters a lot in setting the direction of change in an organization, not only at the micro but also at macro levels.
As long as the goals and objectives of curriculum development are clear, cutting edge achievements in various concerns can be realized. Let us list the role of teachers in the curriculum process. While curriculum specialists, administrators and outside educational companies spend countless hours developing curriculum, it is the teachers who know best what the curriculum should look like. After all, they work directly with the students meant to benefit from the curriculum. In order to create a strong curriculum, teachers must play an integral role in every step of the process. Planning Teachers know their students needs better than others involved in the curriculum process. While state or federal standards often dictate the skills covered by the curriculum, a teacher can provide insight into the types of materials, activities and specific skills that need to be included. Teachers from multiple grade levels may collaborate to identify skill students need at each level and ensure that the curriculum adequately prepares students to advance to the next grade level and to meet the standards. Creation Because teachers must use the curriculum, they should have input in its creation. A teacher can gauge whether an activity will fit into a specified time frame and whether it will engage students. If multiple teachers will use the curriculum, allow as many of them as possible to provide input during the creation stage. As teachers provide input, they will gain ownership in the final product and feel more confident that the curriculum was created with their concerns and the needs of their particular student in mind. Implementation Teachers must implement the curriculum in their own classrooms. Sticking to the plan that has taken so much time, careful planning and effort to create. When a teacher fails to properly implement a strong curriculum, she risks not covering standards or failing to implement effective practices in the classroom. That does not mean a teacher cannot make minor changes. In fact, a strong curriculum is designed to allow a teacher to be flexible and to insert a few personalized components or choose from among a selection of activities. Reflection Reflecting on a curriculum allows teachers and others involved in the process to find any weaknesses in the curriculum and attempt to make it better. Teachers reflect on curriculum in multiple ways such as keeping a journal as they implement the curriculum, giving student surveys and reviewing the results or analyzing assessment data on individual student performance. Not only can reflection serve to improve a specific curriculum, it may guide the creation of new curriculum. Let us see a guide to curriculum development for teachers. Decorating the classroom, dreaming up engaging activities and even sharpening to a fine point those pencils that the students will soon wield often rank high on teachers list when it comes to preparing for the school year. All of this preparation is useless. However, if the teacher does not put just as much effort into developing a curriculum, curriculum is a broad term used to describe the body of information students will acquire as they move from the first day of the school to the last. Because a comprehensive and well-planned curriculum should span the year, providing a seemingly seamless transition between sometimes vastly different topics, curriculum development is a definite challenge. Standards Review What are you going to teach your students? Really, the answer to this question is already provided for you in the form of content standards. Each state has its own set of content standards or follows the common core standards, a national effort to make the education that students receive state to state more similar in nature. As the first step in your curriculum writing process, review these standards. To get yourself more organized, use four different colored highlighters, one representing each quarter of your school year. Move through the standards, highlighting them to indicate when you will cover each standard. This helps you break apart this intimidatingly large guidance document into easily swallowed chunks. Objective Composition When developing curriculum, it is important to focus on composing clear guiding objectives. These simple phrases are intended to encompass what you want students to be able to do at the end of each unit. Objectives generally begin, students will be able to and end with a concise and measurable action that you want students to be able to perform at the conclusion of the lesson or unit. For example, a max teacher 
who is preparing to tackle the formidable task of teaching her students how to write proofs may write a statement. Students will be able to compose original proofs of five or more steps. To ensure that your curriculum is full of lessons that help students accomplish the end goals you have for them, compose your objectives before you plan your day to day lessons. Theme Selection The human brain remembers information best when it can group pieces of it together. Because of this, teaching with themes is a wise choice. Develop themes for each quarter or unit by reviewing your standards and objectives. Think about what text you may want to study or topic may lend itself to exploration while accomplishing the developed objectives. For example, if you want to teach students about informational text but also review the literary concept of conflict, you may want to develop a tornado themed unit in which students read a fiction text about tornadoes along with scientific information text about how these monsters of nature develop. Lesson Planning To many people, curriculum development is synonymous with lesson planning. In truth, however, lesson planning is only a small part of the curriculum development process. After you have reviewed and divided your standards, composed your objectives and developed your themes, you are finally ready to write your lessons. Compose period-long lessons, including details as to how you will teach your students the information you want them to acquire. While you can create a rough sketch of what you want your lessons to look like for the year, don't carve anything in stone. To be a truly effective teacher, you must allow your students comprehension of the material or lack thereof to determine how much time you devote to each topic. If you plan your lessons down to the day, you run the risk of becoming too focused on implementing your curriculum and losing sight of the most important part, the student understanding. Dear viewers, in this lesson, we have seen so far on the definition of curriculum, its importance and the role of the teachers in the curriculum process. Thank you.